So here's something pretty cool. We caught a little mouse. My son Elion and I were just out on a walk this morning and we're gonna get to the reef tank stuff in just a second. I just thought it would be cool to show this though. We caught the little mouse. <laughs> hey guys, it's Aquatic Bobs here. Tonight, little video on nutrients. So something that spurred this, because I've done a video on nutrients in the past, but uh, I went on vacation, came back, and I had cyano all over the bottom of my tank. And I know what that means. I've been here before. Uh, it means for my system specifically that my nutrients have bottomed out. Uh, funny story is the same exact thing happened at my other tank up in my dad's house. Uh, our tank up there has cyano breaking out. And so I tested both tanks zero nitrates and 0 0.02 phosphates uh, when I tested. So obviously I dosed right away, dosed some nitrates and phosphates. Uh, I got them back up now. Uh, my nitrates are at 4 and my phosphates are at 0 0.04. Uh, so I got them up a little bit. But when something like this happens and you have a really bad outbreak of cyano or even dinos would be an even worst case scenario, uh, it takes some time for your tank to restabilize. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because I've had, I've had some viewers on the channel who have sent me messages saying they just cannot get their tank under control. They just can't get their cyano outbreak to stop or their dino outbreak to stop. They can't get their corals to color up. They can't get their uh, polyps to extend and come out. And I'm here to say, I, I know your frustration. I know it. I, this tank, I've been dealing with uh, things on and off the year and a half that it's been set up. Going on like a year and a half now, a little over a year and a half. Uh, but yeah, this, this tank has been very frustrating. There's some corals that are just doing great. And I just fed the tank not long ago. If the water looks a little murky, well, I didn't clean the glass either. But I fed reef roids too. I'm feeding heavy to get the nutrients back up and stable. Um, but uh, now I totally forgot where I was. Oh, by the way, I'm selling some corals on eBay right now too. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, and then a couple of these mushrooms, I think I posted up just three corals, but, uh, I, I can't remember where I was. So, oh yeah, some coral color up great. Like, look at this one. Holy moly. I, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I haven't seen many coral out there, period, that are as colorful and beautiful as this one. Uh, this is a Symphilia. And then I have other ones like this, where it used to be just as colorful as that one. And now it's like kind of just, a, I mean, it's still very pretty and it's looking healthy. But for the longest time, it, it wasn't extending its polyps or tentacles, sweep, sweeper tentacles or feeding tentacles. Uh, and then I have some Acropora like this, which my Walt Disney, I mean, this thing... It, it just, it's stunning, it's beautiful. Um, it doesn't have some of those orange and purple tips. I guess it has some in some spots. Let's see if we can, yeah, you can see it there on some of the top tips, but, uh, but uh, this thing is just beautiful. And then I have other corals, like, you wouldn't even believe it. This is a Top Shelf Aquatics Haymaker Acropora. Like, tiny frigs of this thing go for four or five, six hundred dollars a piece. This is the Top Shelf Aquatics Circus Freak Acropora. This is like a eight to nine hundred dollar coral just for a small frag. And then this one, it's kind of like a joke a little bit. It's the Top Shelf Aquatics Bubble Yum Acropora. This sucker is $1,200 for a decent sized frag of it. And here it is sitting in my tank and it's kind of a light purple paled out. So that's, that's gonna be my next point. When corals pale out 
and they don't have as much color in them, uh, they don't have like a full color like this, that means that they don't have enough nutrients. The zooxanthella in the coral tissue is thin. It's not thick, it's thinned out because it's not getting enough food, not enough nutrients to eat on to thicken up and to color up and to really be healthy. Um, which is confusing for some people because, again, some coral in your tank can just be beautiful and other corals can look rough. And it really kind of depends on the symbiotic relationship between the zooxanthella and the coral and how, how safe and how well fed and taken care of the zooxanthella feels inside the coral's tissue. Um, but overall, the best results are going to be achieved when you have slightly elevated nutrients. Now, that can range from tank to tank. Obviously, Worldwide Corals has, what, 20 to 30 um, parts, per, parts per million nitrates and like 0 0.1 phosphates or something. Uh, and then other tanks have one or two parts per million nitrates and 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 phosphates, and they can have very similar results. Uh, so it, it really comes down to finding your tank's sweet spot. Now for the longest time in my tank, I kind of just guessed and, and tried to assume what my nutrients were. I, I tried to... I tried to pretend and tell myself like I knew everything and <laughs> like I had it figured out and but the truth is is I I I wasn't testing I was assuming and I already know a lot of you out there you just assume with your tanks you guess and and you predict and because one time a long time ago you checked your nutrients and and you saw that your nitrates were five so now a year and a half later you think your nitrates are still five because maybe you've been feeding your tank similarly but the truth is is maybe your nitrates are 30 maybe they're zero you don't know that's why we have to test we have to stay on top of it if you're if something just doesn't seem right in your tank it's because something isn't right in your tank. And that's a lesson that I've, I've had to learn over and over again. I'm still learning, uh, but this time I feel excited about it. Like I feel excited. I know the issue. I know I'd been hanging out on close to zero nutrients even before our vacation, uh, but now I have something to work at. Now I have something to, to practice being consistent at and I'm excited to do it. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to raising my nutrients a little bit. Uh, so that leads me to my last thought is I feed my tank heavy. Like this is a 120 gallon tank uh, with about another 29 gallon sump. Um, total water volume is probably about 115 gallons. Uh, everything together, maybe 110 gallons. Um, but I feed heavy. I feed reef roids like two times a week, sometimes three times a week. I feed the fish pellets two times a day and usually frozen food once a day in a pretty generous portion. And it's like, where the hell is everything going? Where is... Because <laughs> I watch fish food float to the bottom of the tank. I watch it fall down. Like I, I watch it hit the bottom and usually the fish, maybe later they come by and swoop it up and and scoop a little up and in but uh but it's like where the hell is all this food and nutrients going and i have to remember with my tank specifically when you take a step back and you look at this tank there's there's over a hundred corals in here number one number two there's some pretty large meaty corals in here that really are absorbing a lot of nutrients and i have a protein skimmer that's rated for one and a half times this tank volume at high or at, at heavy bio load. Uh, so this this protein skimmer uh, can skim just fine for a tank that is double this size uh, with with a heavy bio load in it. It would still be enough for that. Um, and then I run GFO and carbon on the other side down here. <laughs> right down there GFO and carbon in the bulk reef supply dual reactor but yeah so I've 
I've got a lot of stuff sucking up nutrients in here, and I have to remember that. I have to be conscious of that with my system. Those of you guys who only have 10 corals in your tank, and, and, oh, and also, I don't have a ton of fish in here either. I think I have like 11 fish. Uh, so that's not a huge source of nitrogen and phosphorus going into the tank. But those of you who have 20, 25, 30 fish in a 120 or 150 gallon tank, and you only have 10 corals and a small skimmer, and it's like <laughs> your tank is probably going to have a lot more nutrients in it naturally because you don't have as much in your tank that's absorbing them, and you're, you don't have a high overpowered skimmer. I mean, we just got to take a step back for a second sometimes and think about it, right? Like, think about your system. Do you have a heavy, heavy coraled system like mine? Uh, if so, maybe it's a good idea to have a bunch of fish, a couple extra fish, not, not overdoing it, uh, but to have a healthy amount of fish, especially if you have a heavy skimmer like I do. So I, I already ordered some more fish. I got four more fish coming. Uh, I'm going to continue to feed a little bit heavy. Just tell my nutrients, I, I can see that for a week or two they stay elevated again. And then, uh, then, the, then the race is on. So the beneficial bacteria needs to rebuild up in the system after it has something to eat and feed on. Then it needs to reproduce, colonize. And then the race starts for outcompeting the cyanobacteria. And, and so cyano is, it is a type of bacteria and it's a type of algae, a um, little bit of a separate conversation, but it actually competes with some beneficial bacteria in the tank. So if you take care of the beneficial bacteria, that's why some people actually dose bacteria to help get rid of cyano and to help the tank out. Um, from from pest and nuisance algae and nuisance bacteria so um but yeah it's going to take a little while to get it balanced out because that's the other thing it's just having patience and and doing the right thing consistently knowing that you're not going to see results instantly uh but continuing to do it <clears throat> even even if you think it's been a few weeks and you're still not seeing results just keep doing what you know is right have patience let your tank do its thing and after a few weeks to a month or two, uh, if there's still issues, then make small adjustments from there. Um, that, that advice is just as much for myself as anybody else because I'm like you guys, I want to see things happen right away. I want to see this, go online and look up the Top Shelf Aquatics Haymaker Acropora and the Circus Freak Acropora and the Bubble Yum Acropora. I, you guys are going to be like, man, I, I get what he's saying. Like those things should be color bombs, just unreal color bombs. But yeah, so I think that's enough for one video. I'm going to do kind of like a second part on nutrients and what's a good way to, to get them back up and to maintain them and how I test for them. What's a good way to test for them and how to make adjustments. Also, I've been dosing Brightwell Aquatics, Neophos, and Neonitro, which helps bring them up, and extra amino acids I've been adding to the tank. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for now. In this video, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the damage of having ultra-low nutrients and the benefits of having slightly elevated nutrients. Uh, and we also talked about steps to correct nutrient issues and we also talked about where are my nutrients going and, and what's happening. So uh, remember what Bulk Reef Supply says, heavy in, heavy out, that, that simulates natural seawater to the closest. Uh, natural seawater is very close to zero nutrients, but there's a constant unlimited supply. So the best that we can simulate and, and emulate natural seawater, the better these corals are going to like it because that's what they've already adapted to for thousands of years, right? So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is Aquatic Bob's out.